it's the Jobbers Tears Podcast. Good evening, fellow Jobbers, and welcome to an interesting, what well, we had a pre-show of, of the Jobbers Tears Podcast. As always, I am Janelle from HR, here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black, and Leo in the background. Talk about eating box. Eat, what did you say? You ate rice and beef yeah. out, out of a girl's you vagina? Know, right? You can put Sir where he like... He likes it. You know like that salt, that the, the salt guy oh, that oh. does this? Salt bay. Salt bay, that's what it is. That's what you did. Or like when LeBron does the powder and he does this. So he put rice inside of a girl's vagina and ate it out. That's, that's, not nasty, that's disgusting. I don't think it's that bad. Nah, I don't how think it's know? that bad. I'm not even Depends on how pH level That's like a pH level. No. You know you be getting mad STDs, but nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know me broken yeah. down. He said it's about the pH balance. No, but he know his shit. Now, she this one. She good? Is she good? Yeah, so say get nut inside of her? Yes. You know birth control is all night. I'm supposed to do every single thing with her. So, she... <laughs> so if you get her pregnant, that 1% chance, what are you going to do now? Birth control, she just got her pills. You know it's 1%, it's still 1% chance. But I mean... My show, is not, my show is not on birth control. She's not on birth control? Wait, you not freely? I did think about it once. I was like, I think I want a kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it was one night I was like... What in the entire I was like, I think I want a kid. <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? I ain't, no, 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 no. You're out of your fucking mind. Don't do that. You don't do that. At least to that eye. The next thing you know, like a plan B pill. Nah, that's $40. So what? <laughs> yeah. like, you know how expensive a kid is? Budget you know how expensive a kid is? This thing is bad. Rationality is, I'm not going to spend 40 You do? Yeah. How do you know that? Because I'm nasty, I have to know these things. <laughs> you're not that nasty where you're not putting food in bitches' because coaches. Because I'm smart, dude. <laughs> Dang. The plan B people you get a free at a, a, a clinic. Boom. Well, those that are watching on the live feed in YouTube land, please know to go to your local clinic for any. I did think once though. I was like condoms, you. contraceptives. Yeah. I was and like all yo. of that jazz. Since Valentine's like Day is around the corner, um, and not only you that. Start plan B from right now, B. So you have, you have a stack of Plan B you at your crib? You have a stack of Plan B. No, I do not. You know that shit expires. <laughs> Wait, how long do you have? There's, There's an expiration versions. date. There's two versions. There's the one that have that you use up to 48 hours. There's one up to 72 hours. That's for like, that's stronger than that one. You have time, B. There's time. So don't slip up next time. 72 hours you have. Okay. How, how much is an abortion? Your abortion is like, like, yeah, 350, yeah. How do y'all okay, know, know that? I don't know. even know that. <laughs> yo, 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 shut up. 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 <laughs> Why? Yo, shut up. Why? We just said I killed babies, man. Yeah, back in 2014. This nigga said back in 2014. Wow. That is five wow. years ago. I said I killed babies before a B. Like, you care about something that they're paying for? I killed babies before a B. Hey, See, you're the fucking me. reason why niggas that don't live in New York think we say B at the end of the sentence, like this one. Yo, and I was trying to prove them right when they came to New York last weekend. And Tahirina was like, y'all always say B. And I'm like, I've never said that. And then your little ass. And they sound like they're fucking from the dirty south. All the fucking time, time, yo. So my, what, what, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing do, do, do this. We're about to go out. We're about to chill. I was like, this nigga's... <laughs> wow, <Wild> southern. <laughs> Am I in a fucking St. Louis video? <laughs> About Chicago, with Chicago King in New York. Like, Chicago King with his uh, the, um his best friend, and they sound like they're from the dirty South. But that's how they all sound because Austin sound like that too from the Midwest. It's a Midwest thing. I will tell you what, like did he say I reckon all that? No, 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 no. not your dude. No, he did. They did. They did. They said exactly. record. No, they said I heard record. You know I'm reckoning. I reckon to tell y'all something. Listen here, Joe. Listen no, here, Joe. Listen here, they, Joe. They say Joe. I, they say Joe for every fucking thing. Like it's like. If you said it like, what's up? They'd be like, Joe, let me talk to you about something. You'd be fucking confused because... Who the fuck is nigga, Joe? There's a nigga that could be named Joe. Like, uh, so don't just say, Joe Joe? Like, they told me a Joe Joe. No, they just say one Joe. But, so, but like, his name is Joe, but they say Joe Joe. No, they just, they no, just, they just, just say Joe. They like, Joe as even, for everybody's just name. Just a fucking pronoun. A <laughs> proper <you> name. <laughs> all that I know she got a good education. You know what she said? Like a, uh, like a fucking pronoun. I know she got a good education. <laughs> Can we start the show? Good education. <laughs> Expensive ass education. You, facts. <laughs> Expensive ass oh education gosh. in this bitch. Gosh, but uh, before we do begin our <laughs> fifth episode of our third season of the Job of Taste podcast, we do want to always remind everyone 
to subscribe to the YouTube page. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at the, the Java Tears Podcast. Uh, we do want to give a save the day. So those that are watching on the live feed, we are going to kick off WrestleMania week in a big way. We're going to do a brunch and video game party <laughs> Saturday, March the 30th at Katra. Please save the date. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Oh. If you like video games, if you like brunch, this is gonna this is going to be <laughs> the way to begin WrestleMania week in New York City. Uh, we are going to announce. Oh my God. We're going to announce um, within the next few days the special host. So we do have a special host hosting our event. We're trying to, when I keep telling you guys every episode, every week, we try to do bigger and better things. So please believe that the host that we got for this event is, there you go, (laughs) Yoga Flames, there you go. But, um, and the else? dry biscuit challenge against Yaya from Down Under. Is it happening? It's, <laughs> it's gonna happen uh, WrestleMania week. This and I also got my challenge against Crime Time. I'm overstimulated with all these fucking sound effects. So, once again, we do have a lot of things going on the week of WrestleMania, but we are kicking off WrestleMania week. Isaiah Wolf, what's Bang. up? Bang. What up? <laughs> Uh, with a bang with our brunch and video game party. So please stay tuned. There is going to be a special announcement from the host of the event coming up in the next few days. Um, so stay tuned for that. We are going to open up our segment behind Gorilla's position with our OMG moment of this week. And those that know, the Super Bowl was basura this weekend. Oh I liked my it. God. It was the most boring Super Bowl game I I've seen it. in a very long time. Trash, I don't know why you trash. liked it. No, the only commercial that was popping was the Peanuts commercial. My thing is That way. shit was hilarious. What's the point of paying all these, these commercials for the Super Bowl where you get probably the more views on YouTube? Well, no, I mean, because already people have the nature. It's, it's more of an advertising thing. People that, you have to realize, like, the type of market and the demographic that you're hitting, you have to hit different platforms. So where you have an older demographic of like, let's say, 45 to 60 or whatever, they're going to watch the Super Bowl. They're not watching YouTube. They're not on the computer. They're not tech savvy. So TV is still a very good outlet for, for that. So depending on the demographic, depending on a whole bunch of stuff, advertising, marketing teams, blase, 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 that's the reason why the Super Bowl ads are still very heavy you know, bought because you want to have that prime slot. Mm. And literally, it's America's game. Everybody, whether you hate football, don't like football, you want to boycott it, you're still going to check out the commercials. But you also stream it. People do stream it. All right. And the commercials that, when they stream it, it's going to pop up too. True. Because the ads are still going to be there. But bringing up the Super Bowl, uh, we had the return of halftime heat. Which I was super excited to see and, and actually found out that it's been 20 years since the first ever halftime heat with The Rock and Mankind in an empty arena. It's been 20 years since then, which is a very long time. So, guys, my question to you, um, did you watch Halftime Heat? Did you enjoy it? Um, do you, would you like to see, you know, next year's Super Bowl have another halftime heat? What's up? I didn't see halftime heat. What? Fuck you. We have the network. It was on not I only was YouTube. You gotta oh, watch it later on. Huh? Try to watch it later on. Listen. And speaking it. about later on, there were if you go on YouTube now, Halftime Heat has nearly 1.2 million views. Well, I didn't contribute to so that. So I need you to be a part of that 1.2 million views. Well, since no, you it was it was really good. Watch it. Halftime Heat was really, really I heard good. It was, I heard it, was. it was it was really good. Well done. And I sat there watching it. I was like, yo, this is the future of WWE. Absolutely. Done the right way. Because everybody on there, so you have six guys. You had Johnny Gargano, Alistair Black, Mm -hmm. Velveteen Dream on one side. Uh, No, I'm I'm sorry. Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, and and Alistair Black on one side. Yes. Then you had Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, and... um, And Ciampa. And Ciampa. You looked at that, every one of them had something special about them. Mm-hmm. And done correctly, this is the next level of what's going to happen. 
once they clear out everything up top, right, what's going on, and they bring them all up, I say put them all on one show. I know no, they you won't. Gotta spread the no, wealth. no, no. And we're, no. we're definitely gonna touch on. No, I, I if if, if I'm them, if I'm somewhere. them, what I saw in that chemistry, because think about it, you can put you you can put them anywhere with each other. Yes. Johnny has fought Adam Cole. Adam Cole has fought um, Ricochet. Ricochet. Alistair Ricochet. Black has has fought Champa. Alistair, everybody has fought each other. Dream. So they all so so they all have history with each other. What I'm saying, take all six, because we go back to what we talked about before on pre-production meeting. <laughs> we saw fancy. How nigga, look at me. I'm talking. <laughs> this guy. This guy sounds intelligent. So, in our pre-production meeting, we spoke about it. How what's the future of WWE gonna look like? And the fact that Fox has WWE in October. Yes. The rumor that's going around right now is that Fox is, is really, really on WWE's ass when it comes to ratings. And they're expecting high ratings for SmackDown when it moves it to Friday. And if it doesn't work out, the rumor is they're going to move it to FS1. If, if the ratings aren't, be, aren't great when, when, they, when they come around. See, but I think the thing, too, they have to keep an account. I read an article that... They're not, that it being on Friday is not permanent, which I think is a good thing. It's a phenomenon. I, I hate Fridays. I think that I hate Fridays because I'm always doing something. So I think them trying Friday at least for the first quarter to see... No. Well, the fourth quarter of the year to see viewings and to see that fall season, to see what happens before putting it on FS1 and stuff like that, adjusting the day because I definitely don't think they need to put They need to put it on Tuesday. And or Thursday. Or Thursday. But I do not like them on Fridays at all because, so the demographic that's watching it is our demographic. Mm -hmm. Mid-25s to, um, to early 30s. The demographic that's, that, that they want to watch it has fell off, which is young, young males, which is like younger than 25. They're not. They're not staying home to watch on um, Friday night for Friday night. Or they're not watching it oh. in college. Like when I was in school, I didn't watch. They're school. not watching it in college. There's a, there's a small percentage that will watch it, but they're not watching it. The biggest. So, so regardless, go back to halftime heat. It was amazing. You missed out, bro. It was super amazing. The match was well done. Spots was was good. It didn't seem sloppy at all. And and they came to work mm -hmm. to prove a point. Once again, I'm saying it, and it sounds crazy. Take all six, put them on one show. I don't agree. With maneuver them, maneuver them around. That's such a hard bargain, though. I don't give a. I, I'm, listen, I got a team. I got a squad like that. From you all gotta, the aspects, you gotta divvy them up. Though. No, not, what's the point of divvying them up? Because you have two brands. Like you can't. Just, Who cares? If I was them, you know what? Put the veterans on, on Raw. Let's get these young bucks on SmackDown. Okay, if that was the idea, then get, yeah, get these young bucks on SmackDown and build and the young bucks build that shit up. Man, Adam Cole versus Joe. I would imagine. Go for that. Honestly speaking, it's gonna be ROH on on steroids <laughs> for the most part. Halftime heat was fire. I fucking enjoyed Maroon Five. Sucked. It wasn't that Maroon, but. First of all, for him to dig up fucking Sleepy Brown, I don't hear anybody say, and the whole SpongeBob thing was cute, but then they cut it short for Travis Scott, which I was yeah. kind of tight about. But I don't think it was trash. It, it, compared it, to Halftime Heat? It, no, right. Compared to Halftime Heat, I enjoyed, and, and it's trying to- I love the Moon 5. And it's not trying to be the wrestling fan, but I enjoyed watching Halftime Heat because it was a good, solid 20, 25 minutes of wrestling. You didn't need to flick back and forth. You didn't need to do anything extra. You just watch the actual. People match. were watching that at the Super Bowl. Fucking Mojo Riley was at the Super Bowl and he and he put on his Instagram that he was watching halftime heat in the Cause, arena. Cause they are money makers. That six is money makers. Put them on SmackDown. We, Toss all six on SmackDown. Will, you know what? I want you to hold that thought because we're definitely going to put all that. six. I'm telling you, put when all six on SmackDown. When we get to the Raw recap, when we get to the WWE recap, let's go on to um, what? I never got to say nothing. You say you didn't watch it. Dang, maybe I had an opinion about it. But you didn't watch it. How are you going to have an opinion about uh, something you didn't watch? Go ahead. What you want to say? No, say what you want to say. 
No, no, go ahead. Let me take stop it. Go ahead. You sure? Go ahead. I'm giving you an opportunity to say. Nah, go ahead. Okay, I don't want him to come back and be like, oh, you should have said something. You can say it now, forever hold your peace. Well, if you, okay, I have a question for you then. If you did see it, if you, what, what are your thoughts on the six individuals that were in the match? Um, <clears throat> when it comes to that, we, we, it's you got just, a fresh cut too. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, when it comes to that is, <clears throat> you have to see, if you want the ratings to really go up, you really got to be the battle of the brands. Because Paul Heyman during the, 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 the infamous SmackDown 6, it was always interchangeable. So, you can have a main event where Edge versus Edge, it won't look weird. Or an Edge versus Kirk, Kirk Angle, it, 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 like, it won't look weird. You want your core team to be dominant like that, but don't look like it's repetitive. How that Rush tried to did that, but it got too repetitive because it was the same two guys going at it for one whole month. Instead of saying that, all right, it was the end game, and after that, he makes your two guys end up being the tag team. They didn't tell the story right. They had read around the same exact cues over and over again. And that's why it didn't work so much. Compared to when Paul Heyman had the SmackDown, it was very diverse. And um, even when it compared to something more of a modern time, where SmackDown, when uh, SmackDown Live first started, you had Dean, you had Bray, you had AJ, you had the Usos, and you had, uh, I think I had someone else. But yeah, it was so, and Ray Orton. And Orton. Those matches, even when it was, I think had the Usos. It was Ray Orton. And I forgot the last guy's name. It was someone else. Dolph. And the Miz. All those matches were so interchangeable where, like, you never got tired of these feuds. Even with just a throwaway match, it was still a good feud. And it told the story because that's when I felt that it was really, like, a real competition. So if they're going to do something like that for all these six guys on one brand, you got to make it, yo, what's the bigger end game if they do this? Instead of just making, all right, SmackDown is this and Raw is this. Make it a real competition. Now, since they're switching, now on the same network, make it real. I want these guys over there on Fox instead of third. Because they'll be hungry. Well, I want... They're young and they're hungry. Both. They're young and hungry, but it's like, it's like, yeah, they still have to work it out, yeah. Because at this point, I think all brands are going against each other. When they have the, the, like the World Collides tournament, I like that. Like the two or five guys talk to try to the NXT guys, like, yo, we're going to be better than y'all instead of third. Make competition in-house. Like, having Mustafa Ali go against Daniel Bryan before he was officially moving on to the SmackDown, that was big. Two words colliding, saying that, yo, we represent this brand, I put this brand on my back, I call it your show, and give you the challenge of your life. But the thing about it, they, 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 they don't country. treat 205 Live like a real brand. They don't. But I do think with the shift of time, they like would. Like, they, should, they shouldn't do 205 Live <laughs> like an hour after SmackDown. No, and I always said that because if you look back in the WCW days where Cruiserweights were the first hour of fucking Nitro, like that eight to nine o'clock time slot before Raw went on was nothing but fucking Cruiserweights. But I, I, I wouldn't even do it like that. I'd be like, you know what? I would get somebody to completely run it who's like, a, a, like maybe Ch is Chavo still with the company? No. Is it with uh, he doesn't do a booking with them. Or who? Mm -hmm. Let's get a, a, a fucking. You know what? Put Ray after this contract is up. Whatever he's doing, toss him on tour. About like, yo, run this shit for us. Book it. Storylines. Let's 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 treat it like NXT. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's make stars of some of these people. But it's so hard because the people I feel like in two hundred five live is kind of in that like gray area where they're they're. They're on the big card, but they're not really on the big like card. Buddy, like Buddy, like for instance, Buddy Murphy you talk about, yeah. Mufasa Ali. Like Buddy Murphy is technically not really a, a cruiserweight. He's actually, he's not technically, he's not a cruiserweight. Yeah, he just, at all. He just lost 25 pounds. Like, oh, you, you, you shredded. Well, neither did, well, that's what Cedric Alexander Cedric did. Cedric did, and a lot of guys did it. But you know what? The, the problem with 205 Live, and you, you spoke about it, is that... This is what Enzo brought. Enzo brought like this, um, this pride. Everything you spoke about is pride for my brand. Yeah. I have pride for, for, for being on SmackDown. I have pride for being on Raw. I have pride for being on NXT. But where's the real pride for being a 205 Live? Only time for See, but it's hard because, because they don't have a real, and not even that, they just don't really have the position to put them in like an actual home. 
Like they don't have a home base. Like remember how like certain like on Raw they would change the ropes and it'd be a two or five ma- live match and you'd be like what the fuck. And then on SmackDown they do it again. You'd be like what the fuck. And then then they swapped it all and then put two or five live at the end of SmackDown. And you were like what the fuck. What like, they should do is put it an hour before. Um, what's the face? Okay. NXT on Wednesdays, seven p.m. To be honest, I think it should be a half hour, or even if honestly, even if they decide to. Go back to good old WCW days because I feel like there are certain pieces in that era where they did right, where they did like the Saturday night, WCW Saturday night, where yeah. that could be a show where you could do the cruiseways or you could do the Worlds Collide thing and you could do like, you could have a little bit of NXT, you could have a little bit of 205 Live, you can have a little bit of UK. Like and That's the point, but you're still giving them a moment. Right, but not only that, but you're giving them a home base, and I feel that's, like that's what they that's need. the issue just across the board. Whether it's with an indie promotion, whether it's with WWE, whether it's with AEW, whatever it is, any wrestling promotion or any wrestling related thing needs to have a home base. And when you have of different, when you have the big tree of WWE, and you have the different branches, like you have the NXT, you have the UK, mm. you have Saudis, you have all this, you have you know, all this stuff. You got to have a strong bark when you have those branches. And that's why it's important to have a base. So I think for them, once they do go live and, and they figure that out, they'll figure out two or five lives. To be honest, I think if you're not going to do the cruiserweight division, the, the, the justice that it needs, don't do it at all. Just have them on the brand. Like, it doesn't matter at this point. Like, if you're not going to highlight a cruiserweight, then why even fucking do it? But Makes sense. neither here or there. We're going to move on to, as everyone knows, we're on the fast track and headline to WrestleMania. And also a part of WrestleMania weekend is the WWE Hall of Fame um, that's going to be happening the Saturday night. So the night before WrestleMania here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and apparently there has been, an, not an official official, but there's been a tentative official um, first inductees of the class of 2019, which would be the Heart Foundation. So I know all of us growing up, our Heart Foundation included Brian Pillman, um, Davey Boy Smith, um, Owen, and, and Brett. But this one, the one that's actually being inducted would actually be the original um, Heart Foundation, which would be of Bret Hart, um, Jim um, Neihart, and Jimmy Hart. And it'd be a cool thing because Jimmy Hart and Bret already have a ring. So that'd be their two-time um, Hall of Fame. And then also with the loss of Jim um, Neihart this past August, um, he'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, my question to you guys is, what do you think about this tag team actually going in? Because also, they were, um, if you didn't know, that Brett and Jim were the two-time WWF Tag Team Champions between 1985 and 1991. So, what are your thoughts on this particular tag team going in? And, um, yeah, from there. Because I feel like we spoke about Hall of Fame last week a little bit, but what do you think about this Hall of Fame pick? Which I think is interesting. I didn't actually see this one coming. Mm. Oh, okay. Hmm. No, it's a, it's a good look. It's a good look, but I, I, I prefer that they should have inducted the, the, all the Hall of Fame Foundation. Because that state was... They can't. Like, was like, like, that state was Why? Owen. Owen, is, that's what I was going to ask you. Owen really is not fucking with them like can't. that? It's the wife. Can't do it. Well, and, and, to be, and to be honest, as everyone knows that knows me, I'm a, I always said Owen better than Brett. And I feel like if you were going to put Owen in the Hall of Fame, it shouldn't be in a group setting. It should be by himself. So I think that's a part of the reason why. Did she win the lawsuit? Yeah, I, heard she did. I think they settled. So yeah, I think there was a settlement. I don't think it was like a con- like a conclusive win. Can we let's not talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why, because I saw it when I was a kid. And I, should, I don't know. Something about that, that, that whole situation gives me chills. Yeah, it's just, yeah, just weird. Huh? No one saw that. What? That didn't, that didn't make it decorate nothing. They cut that part out. No, no. but like the, the introduction of the mat, like the beginning of the it. The beginning and, of and it when it happened. It, and then they cut to Jim Ross and then yeah. Jim Ross and like then that whole, that whole night. And then the next day when I got to school, it was an eerie feeling about that whole shit. It's like, weird. It's weird. Let's, it's so, weird. Um, yeah, but, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, but I'm asking, oh, I'm asking about the Hall of Fame choice. Nah, babe. The Hall Foundation, something, something off about that. I mean, like I said before, the Heart Foundation is just like, I prefer the Nation of Domination. <laughs> Boy. You should see this promo that fucking Farouk cut against Stone Cold. 
I'll talk about it later. When Stone Cold was doing this. Oh, like well, during that time, that era where he was going for like the WWE Champions? Like, no, he was... Or like Intercontinental. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a title. He was, he, it, it was, a, he was against Owen. Mm-hmm. He was against Owen at the time. And it was... The segment that that um that Becky cut on on Monday Night Raw yeah. is the same exact segment that Stone Cold did with Vince about his, about being clear. Oh, being clear oh, because, yeah, really? because he wouldn't let Austin fight, and then he said, "Go home, you know, wait until you get cleared and let the." And that was kind of like the beginning of when that that fourth wall of of Vince being owner and commentator happened. Yeah, and, and then tittering also back had and forth a, um, the uh, the Michael oh. Jackson hoop earring. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who told Austin to have that shit. That so he had wild. that one and um but there was a promo. I'll send it to you guys. No, in the I group know chat. I think I know so the promo you talking he, about. He he comes back, Austin comes back, runs into the ring and then he just starts stuttering. No, 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 no. It, it, it was not in that. He starts talking he's like I want to be cleared. And then he's like, yo, I don't trust you. So then Vince is like, yo, no. Same thing that we, that we just saw on Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, no. Come on. The only, the only way you can fight it, if you do what? He's like, well, I want Owen's ass. Then he breaks the fourth wall low key. But as a kid, I didn't realize it. You don't, yeah, you but then watching know. it now, he was like, yeah, Owen broke my, almost broke my le- neck and took my whole career away. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was real talk. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's a lot of wild shit. Like, if you watch on the network, like, old Raws. First of all, the king wild with the mouth. Oh, wild with the mouth. Wild with the mouth. So, but there are, like, so many things as an adult now, you're like, oh, oh shit. Because I didn't get it. I, I watched a clip about three weeks ago because I was going to post it for, for, um, for, for Black History Month. I was thinking about posting because Farouk had a dope as promo is when I really saw Farouk like promo promo mm-hmm. so but what caught my eye was caught my ears especially was was when Stone Cold was like yeah Owen broke, almost broke my neck and ended my career so Farouk came out so then Austin's like yo I want whatever I want, I want my title shot and then Vince is like no I can't give you I have to get cleared get cleared. I have to get cleared then Farouk pops up on the, on the Titantron you have fucking The Rock behind him you got the whole nation behind him you had Farouk and then you have D'Lo behind him. He's like, what? He's like, what? You're in a title shot. I'm, I'm paraphrasing right now. And then he's like, I'm going to kick your ass. Blah, blah. He's like, kick your ass? You know, kick your ass means? And he starts going a whole promo about, you know what, hard, what living a hard life is? Yo, shit, wow. And then he was like, you know what a hard life is? Using your hands because your brother is using a, all the forks in the house. You only have one fork to pass around. Using your hands to eat. And I was like, nigga, what, where are you going with this? It's a fire promo. I'll, watch it. I'll, send it to, I'll send it to the group chat, but I, I watched it like three times. Just it was send so, me, just send me the date of the Raw. Because it was so it. well done, but it's, it's um, the nation showed like who they were, and the Rock was mad out of place. Oh, super duper out of place. Because the Rock never dressed like them, but going back to what you said, that's a group that should be in the Hall of Fame. And I don't know why they put them all separate. See, but the thing is, right? That I think the thing would, the Rock has to go before Nation goes in. Yeah, that's the thing. The Rock has, has to, to go that's in. That's a huge issue. The Rock has to go in, and, and I don't you know. You already have Godfather that was inducted. You already have Farouk. Ron, um, D'Lo. I'm not. I think he has a as a bad relationship yeah, with WWE. I don't know how that works. Because D'Lo's not in the Hall of Fame, and he was not at the table for three. But see, think about it. How think about how like how DX is. Like they put in everybody but X Pac. <laughs> like D Lo is the X Pac. Um, and China. Mine is China. But what I'm saying is that that's the kind of similarity. They're going to put China in. I don't know why they put X Pac in. But see, that's the thing. Like, it's the way should put, the way should put China. It's the whole connection to that, probably. And, and then. Was, he was married. But to her. he's always at WWE. But, but the thing about it, he has a porno out with China, which I've watched, sadly. Yeah, it's on the the what? I never watched the Tommy Lee one. Tommy Lee? Tommy Lee's porn. Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. No, but Payman is wow. it's, it's a little too old. Like, I've watched the Xbox one. Did you he, watch it recently? It's, it's, on, it's on Pornhub. Really? Yeah. I saw you know it. Now he's looked. Now he's interested. <laughs> now, nah, now he's intrigued. Shocked, like, it's, it's just like, I get older and older and older. You realize that I had how much politics is really wrestling. All right, some people connect to each been, other. You yeah. can go to hold up and like, something. I think that they might relate. I think with Dino Brown, he didn't go to the Hall of Fame. 
It's a whole that situation. Like, D-Lo's going to go in with Nation. It's not even going to be a separate induction. Yeah, true. But then again, I feel like he never got his due. Like, he was the first ever double. Um, He was a Euro and Intel champion before. He had the chest play. You know, he had swag. He had no, he, he was used okay in this era. Yeah. I think okay is... Is you should use a better word than okay. Like for him to be a black man yeah. in that era, be kind of the highest mid card guy. Yeah. That's a huge thing. Well, he's talented. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that the cream always rises to the top, regardless of who the fuck you are and where you're at. Yeah. So like, like he's super fucking talented, and it's at a point where they didn't have top mid card guys. The mid card was built up. The mid card, yeah. Late. No, 90s. no, not even late nineties, early two thousand. Late that's, 90s, that, that was a, that was like the premiere time, like two thousand three, two thousand and two. Yeah. That because was like mid card years. Because the they Valdez, used, the Rakishi, that right? Like, yeah. Because the uh, the top guys were really Rock Austin, Trips. Trips wasn't there yet until 05. I didn't take her. Uh, take her, but they but the top guys were were, were a revolving yeah. door. It Kurt was Angle. just like it was just this. So their mid card, and that's why. Oh, Leo, can you close the window? That's why I never get mad about Brock not being on TV because it's the same energy that they had in the late nineties, early two thousands. Because sure they did. focused so much on the mid card, it gave all those guys more TV time than focusing on the champion. Austin never, def Austin did the, didn't defend the title every fucking week on Raw. But, but the thing that about made it, sense. but but think about it though, there is no mid card now. Right, so that's, that's the where, problem. Right, that's where the issue is: is that they focus so much on short term that I think the era, especially Attitude Era, was definitely more long term. Like, even though let's say the feud, like the feud between fucking HBK and Taker, that shit went on for a solid year and some change. Yeah, and, but the, the thing is, Triple H versus Jericho, that went on for a while. That went on, but for it's some time. Your, your understanding is this is so we're going off subject, but. What the problem is with the current era, they're, they're on the, the Cena effect. And I always said it, and I always say this, and I say this numerous times on the podcast, I'll tell anybody this, Cena was so dependable that they thought they could do it again. Where you put one guy there, and you depend on him throughout. Because Cena, we always talk about it, that injury he had, where he's supposed to be out for a fucking that year. He came back three months. Top. He came back three months like a fucking superhero. And won the Royal Rumble. And won the Royal Rumble. <laughs> and the whole, the whole building shook. Shook. The entire you can't MSG do that anymore because shook. you. I don't know what Cena has that he was just that guy. It just was the it factor. It was just yeah, he and, just and, was and, that guy. And, and, and yeah, and I can't. You can't explain it. You you can't replicate it. They but they, they can't do it again. I mean, I kind of see it this way. Reason why? I mean, there was other guys there still. There was the Edge. Because Edge definitely dominated the era with him. But Edge's career was cut Edge short. Was, yeah. yeah, Randy Orton dominated with him too. And Randy Orton got into drug uh, issues. Um, Batista left. Batista left. Um, I just okay. All the lifelines, like, all the lifelines yeah, that they right, used. I just feel like even though they had other guys there, they didn't use them properly. No, no, yes they did. They yes they did. They ain't finished. finished. Such as when Booker T rises up, he was still not like he was not taking some um seriously. Yes, he was. He never had a that King whole Booker. yo, and I didn't even like that whole never, King Booker shit. He never had that a shit victory. went for a, a fucking victory. minute. JPL, he was a heel though, so he's not gonna have a clean JPL, victory. JPL, even though how that he didn't have clean victories, but like certain stuff that went Big Show choke slam through the ring, he crawled out. He was finding some way to scheme out his way. It was not always interference. So JPL it, always cheated half the time. He was cheating. But Rey Mysterio, his matches wasn't taken seriously. CM Punk, how how is CM Punk WWE champion? But yet, Kane versus um um Jante and Amalad match is like main event in the paper. The match. same fucking way where you have WrestleMania, what was it seven? And you had fucking well, it's either seven or eight. It's the same shit that they did the Macho Man and Ric Flair, where they was in the middle of the fucking WrestleMania and had I fucking Hogan that. headline. It's the that. same thing. I understand that, but my point is this way: because they depend on John Cena so much. These other guys that should have been up there with him, that could dominate with him, just like the Miz, the Dolphs, the Punks. But they wasn't. Hold on, 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 hold on. I see what you're saying. But let me finish. Let me, let me finish. But this is why they have that. It took the Miz to rebuild back himself to get to the Miz he is today. Now, someone like Dolph had to rebuild back himself to take all these losses all these years during the John Cena era to get back he is right now. Punk 
it was just like, I get it. Punk has certain spotlights, but I always felt like his reign. Why are you with, why are you beefing with Kevin Nash and Triple H? Why you had to lose against Triple H to stop his momentum? The next is, they had an instant start with Wade Barrett. Yo, That's why debatable. you had to bury the whole faction after that? That's, well, you had it. You gotta, you gotta. Because it's super secret. You gotta separate, but the thing is, you had to. In order for him, and you I agree with the, I agree everybody. with the Wade Barrett thing to a certain extent. But in order to have everybody that was in Nexus to actually be some type of a star, they had to break up somehow. Like well, my, you wasn't gonna right. have to run a muckus right. for for two three years. Well, they, they weren't DX. Right. They weren't the Heart Foundation. They weren't any of that. Like those guys in Nexus well, were up and right coming. Because like it was and, hot, it was too hot, and they had that run. And after he did that, I was just like, okay. But after they did that, then they all broke off and started doing their own thing. And so, that was important. To go off of what he said before, so before we move on, let's talk about what you just said. You mentioned JBL. Yeah. At the time when he was feuding with Cena, Cena wasn't super red hot. He was red hot, no, but he wasn't there yet. JBL put Cena on a whole different level. Yes. Whole so different level. JBL boosted up Cena. But I boosted up Cena. Booker T, Cena were not running the same game. They were, they, were, they were at different times. Mm -hmm. um, who else did you say? You said Rey Mysterio? Rey Mysterio won a fucking title. And the only reason, honestly, and it's sad to say, the only reason why Rey became super duper hot at that time in that period when he won the title was because Eddie died. Because, because Eddie passed away. We, we understand that. <laughs> that was so, okay. Now, who else did you say? You, you mentioned a couple of... For most of that you mentioned, they weren't running at the same time. When Cena became red hot, the only thing we can honestly say that he destroyed was a Nexus. And Rusev. And <laughs> Rusev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only we only can for, honestly say he did. Nexus was during red hot Cena time. And he fucked, them, he fucked them up. And the reason why, you said that they had to break up. No, no, no. At the time he stopped them, they should not have been broken up. Yeah. They were at a... Um, they, they, were, they were the rebel... Stable in WWE, and it was some dope Maybe shit they could have done. I didn't. Because, I didn't like, like how it. I that. I didn't like, care how long was it long? Because their run was only after two months. It was not that long. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that no, long. Was, I wasn't and they even tried to hash it. Now, Punk. Nexus, Punk. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I listened to that Coco Bennett show like three times. I fucking love that interview of him spilling that tea. He had his points, but Punk was hot. And you know who took him out? Your man's. Who? When Rock. he lost to Rock? Yeah. Yeah. It. Punk Punk was hot. Now, there's certain things that he was mad about, obviously, and he has good reasons to be mad about it. The Rock situation, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I will admit it. Triple A separated in a couple of times, but at the same time, Punk was in every main storyline for a very long time. Because he was champion. He was champion. He was champion for more than a year. And we can't deny that. I'm not denying that. We can't. We, we, we can't. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not, I'm not done. We can't deny that of what, how hot Punk was. And Cena didn't destroy Punk's reign. What happened was with Cena is that WWE depended on Cena way too much. And it worked. It worked because Cena is the kind of guy, he has that it factor, you get a little rub, the right rub, it boosts you up. True. What happened is they tried to do the same thing with Roman Reigns. Yeah. And, and one, yeah. the fans didn't like it. And with Roman, it was a hit or miss. It was a hit or miss once again. Once again and he, was, he, he didn't have the it factor. I think that reason why, that another reason why this makes a little hot take, but Emma was still figuring out in the wrestling during that time when Johnson was hot. So imagine now you see Roman Reigns riding to the top. You see guys who've been watching the Indies for so many years. This is when the internet was getting really bubbling for our internet wrestling. You see the Seth Rollins, all these dudes you watch the Indies like, yo, this guy's just better than Roman Reigns that should not be in the top. So I kind of get it why John Cena worked because the internet wasn't as hot as before. No, well, you didn't have spoilers. You didn't have, you didn't have none of that. So like, it, the era yeah, that we're in now with the internet yeah, so is Roman very Reigns different than the is, Cena era. Is, imagine Roman was hot during the Ruthless Aggression era. No, Roman's a throwback. You are right. Roman's a throwback is a throwback wrestler. Correct. But the thing is, regardless, he could be. He's a star. He's a star. Roman's a star. Yeah. 
The problem is he's not the star. You know what? I'll say this. I'll say no, this. you're 100 percent right. Hold on, hold on. I'll make this better. I'll make this better. Roman push will fit in another era. No, no, you're right of what you're you're right of what you're saying. But Roman's still a star. He is. He has a star. He has a look. He has a he he, he moves well and, and, and he um he's been he's solid he's solid on mic. But the thing is, like what you said, we're in the internet era. People want options. If you bring, if they had six guys, like NXT six guys that I keep talking about, you put them on a roster, you interchange them, like you spoke about before, my God, gold. But they need more people. That, but isn't that what, right. and we're going to move on, right. let's talk about Super Chess Spotlight of this week, but my question, my thing to that would be, isn't that what they're doing right now in NXT? So... No, they're still doing right, NXT. I'm still doing it on our main roster. But that's what I'm saying. If they're already doing it on NXT, why would you do it on the main roster? Nobody, not, not, not everybody knows about people on NXT. That is true. Mm. That is true. Nobody knows about people on NXT. Mm. You know, you, 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 you said it before. If people, some people watch NXT, but some people don't watch the main no, roster. No, I agree, but I'm just I saying. I, my but, thing is, is that... Or you take two or three guys out and ask somebody else. Yeah. If you want to spice it up. Yeah, because, but, that, but, but keep at least three together. Because, like, so that's what I'm saying. My thing is, is that if I oh, had right, right. to, I, I, my thing is I would spread the wealth. Like I would not give all six to SmackDown and just be like, recreate what you did in NXT. That's not fair because then you, then what does Raw have? I mean, I do think to have Raw to be that kind of older brand, I think it will be dope, but I'm all about us sharing the wealth. But let's move on to our superstar spotlight of this week. Um, it goes to no other than the founder of this guy is clapping for a particular reason. The founder of the House of Glory Wrestling School, Amazing Red. Um, he has, you know, been on the indie circuit for a very long time. Um, he's been in TNA. He's a former three-time X Division champion. Um, he's also been um, NWA World Tag Team Champion. Um, but he also um, the cousin of Selena Vega. So he's New York bred. And I think, you know, speaking from someone. Joel and Jose and Maximo are big. Them too. Um, but Red in his own self has made a name for himself in the, you know, in the wrestling community. And, you know, first of all, it's always amazing to see those guys that have made it big um, actually go back to their, to their community, go back to where they're from and start a wrestling school and help those that have, that have those dreams and aspirations to becoming a superstar. So I, I commend Red mm -hmm. on doing that because that's not easy to come back to the hood and get back to the hood and say, here, here's a school where you can mm -hmm. come learn. I can be one-on-one -on -one with you and talk to you and give you my one-on-one -on -one advice because that's not easy because you have his school, you have um, Lance Storm school, you have D.O. Brown school in Vegas. Um, there's so many, you have um, fucking Create a Pro in Long Island. Um, I, is, is it Zack Ryder's school? I think it is Zack Ryder's Yeah. Story. So you have all these, you know, yeah. superstars um, <laughs> from past, present um, that are coming back and really giving back to their community. So uh, my question to you guys is we always talk about Superstar Spotlight is what is a match? And, and, and Red still wrestles in, in his shows. So what is a match that you would like to see in the House of Glory featuring Amazing Red? Yeah, not for me, right? Yeah, you know that he started mad young too, right? Oh yeah, started he has 13. a baby face. He started at thirteen. Yeah, because I remember seeing him in like life. Still. You want to give us his bio? I want to still like. The reason why <laughs> that I heard about Amazing Red is because I used to steal wrestling magazine from Pathmark by my school and like. Um, so you're a thief. <laughs> why would you say? Why would you call him a thief for? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he just said. <laughs> but you, you don't gotta. I just want to acknowledge yourself. Don't don't rat yourself out. I'm mean, stealing is being a thief. It's thievery. But yeah, I guess, guys. I did it years ago. Yo, I was in I was in middle school. It was me, my boy. I just, oh no, no, no! no. I got a story about that too. So, See, no, don't don't tell stories about boy, you. Don't tell me. stories about Yo, you stealing. Yo, listen, listen, listen. Like, listen, they can't do nothing. They Half sure. Mark don't exist no more there. Okay. Right? I I used to rob them Seven Eleven footlongs. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they was actually full of those bigger. Like now, these little dicks now. No, it's actually like the wait, arm size. Wait, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the what? Right? The what? 
The, the little big foot longs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck are those? Because they're small, but they call they call them foot longs. Yeah, but it's not. But like they little dicks. Yeah, there was a big dick status. Big dick Wait, status. Wait, you just fucking confused me because you said this was a long dick, but then you cuffed your arm back and said this is a big dick. Big what? Big dick status on the sub. Yeah. And we either you had like um, had with two hands. Pause. Pull out. Pause. So, <laughs> whoa, me, my boy Isaiah, <laughs> yeah. and my boy Carlton, right? Yo, so, that's Leo what's Carlton is mad and funny. Isaiah, we still mad Are you guys still friends? Isaiah, yeah, he's not pro black though. Like, he's on some like, you know, deaf to white people and stuff like that. Okay, no. y'all saw this video where some guy told that a hey, interracial couple at the restaurant? No. All right, he went viral for that. <laughs> hold on, hold on, what? He's so your man is yelling at an interracial couple? Right, your man is a I don't remember that video. Interracial dating? Look it up, it got big. So he ain't. Not big enough, like, like nigga, I don't know. No, it was over here. Oh. I'll show you the video. So, like, he don't like, um, White people for some reason why? Like, I love white people. Like, I don't like crackers, but white people are cool. I, I like I like I like white people that that's our ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. white people. Oh lord. Yeah, white people. I like white people. Not crackers. I don't like cracker ass crackers. Yeah, me either, me either, me either, me either. White so people? I don't like white devils. Yeah, me either. White I people. love I love my white brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah, part yeah. of the cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are I allies in the movement. White devils in the street because if it's brick cold outside, you wear shorts, you're the white devil. No, you can wear flip flops still. What is it? Maybe wear the half shoes. White devil. The half shoes. White devil. All I know is this summer your toes better be on point yeah, if you have a flip flop. Yeah, you. you better so, be getting pedicures. They first, so we should steal stuff, right? So like, so this guy came with Mason Red because he looked mad young. Like he looked like me. I'm like, yeah, the baby yo. Face. So then years later, I watched TNA. This what Tino was popping. Popping. Yo. Yeah. He brought his cousin Crimson. They were crimson. The one that had like the like GI Joe body. Yes. Yo, and that's why I'm like now after he disappeared. I, I didn't hear about him, but now years later he's a wrestler. So what I remember, I want him and my son um, Mustafa Ali to go out. I think it'll be a great match. I just think that Mustafa they'll two or five live. Yeah, and I think that they will top each other. They'll top each other, top each other, top each other. So I want to see my son Mustafa, aka Mumu. Versus Amazing Red. Wait, so. you gave Mustafa Ali a nickname? Yeah. Mumu? Yeah. He's brown like me, so, you know? Actually, he's lighter than you. But, like, like, like you know, he's still part of the struggle. You know, it's crazy. Mustafa Ali's from Chicago. Yeah, I know. He's, he's a That's cop. wild. He used to be a cop. Really? Yeah. Yo, that's why my yeah, homegirl, yeah. Angie, yeah, said that... No. God, no. Wow. Oh. She said that... I think she said that Mustafa him? and his brother, they all went to the same school. I'm not surprised. In yeah. Chicago. He was goth thing. He actually had long hair and stuff like that. Still has long hair. No, 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 no. He was like, Yo, you're ignorant. You're yeah. ignorant. And after that, um, he met his girlfriend because it kind of set up. He's like, why, why do you know this? Auntie Lily. Oh, okay. Yeah, the podcast is popping. They had a Bernie Murphy episode. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, that's oh. That, that should bring tears to my eyes. Hold on, dogs. Hold on, dogs. Talk to him. Talk to him. Yo, my nigga, why, that Rusev and Lana episode. Rusev and Lana make y'all cry. Son, did, did part two come out? No, not yet, not yet. Next week, next week, next week, dog. Oh my god. Yo, Auntie Lily, son. Auntie Lily's popping, B. It make you cry, son. Yo, y'all heard the um, Mojo Raleigh episode, B? Oh, fuck! Son, <sighs> they was hating on him, B. Practice squad, man. Out here, everybody hustle him, B. And Chasing glory! Son, son. Yo, fucking Austin has him as a fucking, on his team shit. Austin been kind of dry lately, B. Austin, po- Austin, team Austin podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but, but- Austin's podcast is kind of, uh, uh, uh. It's in the midst sometimes. Yeah. But, but, but Lydia Garcia's podcast yeah. though, son. Yeah, sure. Because she, whole- because she has a conversation with you. Yeah. It's no, no, not no. like, it's not like an interrogation. I feel like sometimes, and that's why everybody shitted on the whole Ambrose and Austin thing. Oh. Austin and inter- like low key interrogated him. And when you, I feel like as an interview, like someone, that, like let's say we have someone on the show that we've had in the past that we interviewed them. We do our, we do a background on them yeah. and we have a conversation off camera with them, trying to get a feel of what things to ask, what things not to ask and things like that. So like when we had, when we did Marcus Marquis and we let him go all the way off, yeah. we made sure that he was okay with that. Yeah. So when you I mean, interview yeah, someone, you gotta, you gotta kind of under, have an understanding and, of who and, you're interviewing. Well, well, Austin is, um, 
he's he's southern and he's a hard southern. Like Lily, like, like Lillian is, like she she comes off very motherly, homey ish. Like, cause all right, the Lana and Rusev shit, my nigga, these motherfuckers oh. lived a hard life, both of them separately. Yeah, yeah, no, but it was very much a life though. So quickly, I don't want to ruin for anybody, but Lana is a ballerina. Yeah, she, she's, she's a, a dancer. She's a d- dancer. And then her whole entire life, she was called fat. And she had an eating disorder. Okay, yeah, she did talk about that in Total Divas. She had an eating disorder, really bad eating disorder. And Rusev always called fat his whole entire life. And he got low self esteem, low key. You could tell though. And she's the outgoing in the relationship. But she got low self esteem too. It depends on certain things. But, I feel like when you're in a relationship, though, there are certain things where you, one the other person is going to have low self esteem about that. That's your strong, yeah, and vice versa, and that's how no, that works. And because because so so he's talking about like his career, and but it was beautiful though because Yo Lana really loves this man. Yeah, you can tell. Like like really loves him, believes yeah. in him, and then she was like, yo, because <laughs> this isn't funny, but it was like, yo. The love there was amazing because he was talking about how he doesn't he don't think he don't think he'll ever do anything in WWE. He's like he's at that point mm-hmm. where he's he's really down about it. and Alana's like, nah, we're gonna go hard, we're gonna figure something out. The only thing I'll give Rusev, he's on TV consistently. But it's just like, okay, this all going to the it's just like I feel like you treat him like dolls, dogs. Like, I just feel like... But the, Dolph, Dolph is a very wait, wait, different... Wait, 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 wait. The reason why I said to you, like, Dolph, because you have all these good matches every week. You got all these, all these craziness in the match, and then just to lose, or you get a nice little push just to lose. Like, yo, Rusev, like, I didn't like when he first came because I didn't say the business, but I understand it right now. Yo, Rusev is that dude where, like, like, yo, he had my son, like, Aiden English. Like, Aiden was like, yo, I believe in you, dogs. Over but Aiden, no, like, Aiden made, got him over. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, got him no, over. and then he, and then he, he, he also talked about he lost like 25 pounds. Because oh. how? Tried to change his look. He cut his hair. They didn't like it. Obviously, they know about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But back to Amazing Red. Yeah. You raised a good point about him coming back to hood because his school is definitely cheaper than most schools. First of all, mm-hmm. it's definitely cheaper than most schools, and the fact that he's been where he's been. And, still want to come back. and comes back and then teaches people the right way of doing things yeah. and the principles behind things and how to do things. It's it's absolutely amazing. The location is brilliant. You just get off the train right there. Yeah, it's by my house. And it's, it's right there. Like, like you think a lot double R? Like, people from out could get right there in Jamaica. You walk down, it's right there, dogs. Oh, for the smart. show? Yeah, smart. And that's how his show is, he, he, he does the well. The quality of the show is always good. And the fact that, like, Sasha still comes back. Yeah. Yeah. To train, yeah. and other wrestlers have come back that we can't talk about. Yeah. Have come over to, to train yeah. as well. It's it shows his res- how much people respect him in the business. And everyone that you go in there, especially like the main stars, they look like us, dog. Like yeah, and it's also one of the few schools that's predominantly kids oh, of color. Minority. I just said that. He's that's what I'm. I'm agreeing with agreeing. you, my nigga. Oh. Relax. <laughs> He's agreeing with you. People of color, Latino, because um, Bruce said it once. He was like, yo, the last, the last show that I did, I was like, yo, it's crazy. Most of the, the card was Spanish and black people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, a, it's a dope thing. So who would you like to see Red face? Yeah. Oh, Ray. Did they go out of before? I never seen it. Probably in TNA. Probably. No, Ray was never in TNA. Ray was never been in TNA. Uh-huh. Ray wouldn't do that. Maybe you know. You sure it wasn't like the all mass niggas look alike. You sure it wasn't in um, Lucha Underground? No, Red was in the level Lucha Underground. I like Lucha Underground, but it's kind of they don't pay well. Uh, Have you heard about their contract dispute? What for what? Oh, so for Lucha, they, person, they won't let no one out there. But but no, have you seen the contract though? No, what is it? It is trash. Pennies. It is trash, trash. Mm-hmm. I think they get paid. The most you get paid per episode if you're taped. It's a thousand dollars. So let's say you get you on every show, you're making twenty thousand dollars. That's that's all the talent, like top talent. Yes, yeah, like you're not making no money. But if you were to ROH, they give like sixty thousand. 
So why do people do Lucha Underground? Because like, so at the time, what, what I, I read a story the other day about it. When Lucha Underground came around, the only company that was really around was WWE. Because think about it, Lucha Underground came out three or four years ago. Yeah, and Lucha was wow, have, yeah. Lucha, Lucha was pretty much the if not the only. One being broadcast on Netflix. Yeah, yeah so that was a, so so that was a that thing. That Netflix deal, money was into the company, and now that kind of all of their top stars have kind of gone and moved on for Lucha. They really don't have nobody. They don't have anybody, and they weren't really paying people out. And the thing about it, when you sign a contract, it's hard to work with another company. Yeah, I heard that too. Like a lot of people trying to get out their contract because because when they first came around, it's like okay, you know what. There are no other companies that's paying really, yeah. so you know I'll just I'll take this. We'll film a season and then I'll figure out what's going on after. But some people started start signing long term deals, and then now you have ROH that's paying well now. You have other mini companies coming up. AEW's paying like borderline WWE contracts. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like we've all I feel like every week we've talked about AEW. AEW, AEW, AEW. I'm low key tired of talking about it because I just feel like I rather let everything play out first and then right. talk about it. But still, I talk about it. It's always a rumor of people <laughs> jumping ship and going to AEW, just like WCW. You know, when the when Hall and Nash did they jump and you well, know we they weren't old enough for that. The wrestling game. What do you mean? We weren't old enough to talk about it. We didn't have a podcast by that time. We didn't, but I mean, it's the same concept. No, but now we could talk about it. But I don't feel like talking about it. But we'll let's talk about it. So, What's up? the new rumor, because there's a rumor every day. So, if you have not heard, AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, and the Usos, their contracts are all up in April. As everyone already knows, Dean Ambrose is not re-signing. This does not necessarily mean, quotations, not necessarily mean that he will be, you know, jumping ship and going to AEW, or if it's a work, or whatever the case may be. But... Um, apparently the new, the rumor on the block is, um, the Usos are unhappy and they may or may not be resigning to WWE. Now, and also to seem like AEW has been poking at Randy Orton and, you know, trying to negotiate or figure out, you know, how can we get you on board? Cause they just signed Jimmy Havoc, which I think is a really great signee. Um, good. Good it's really good. Jimmy's a little bit but more than the mid card, but <laughs> Jimmy Havoc is a very solid, I think, cho- you know, draft He's young. pick. Um, but what are your thoughts on this new rumor on the block? Because I just think it's a bunch of you know, pish posh, but gosh, until it happens. Like, I'm one of those, like, until it happens, yeah. it happens, but Randy ain't leaving. Yeah. Randy ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Randy makes really good money at WWE. And not to, not to do shit. Rand, Randy le- legit comes in, RKO's, has my match, and goes home. Not to do shit. Because Randy doesn't get... um, Because AJ wants Randy's deal of dates. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody's talking about that. No, we spoke about that. No, no, no. I'm talking about when, when the rumor came around, people didn't realize that AJ wants Randy's deal. Correct. Yeah. Of dates. Randy's good. A lot of people don't understand, like... So there was a, um, a post that came around about Carl Anderson from the Good Brothers. Yeah. He, they were talking about, oh, he should go to... Um, he mentioned, like, yo, I love working for WWE. I get to see my family. Yeah. And so I'm going, because he worked he's in New Japan. He's, he's across yeah. the... He was all the way Across the world. Yeah, exactly. And he couldn't see his family. Now I'm in WWE for WWE. I can see my family. As much shit people talk about... Some guys are happy of where they're at. Randy, real talk, if I'm Randy, I'm not leaving WWE. I'm not I'm, Nick making a move. I'm telling you why I'm not leaving WWE. I'm going to tell you a couple reasons why. Number one reason why, when I have my drug problem, who stood by me? And when I came out of the situation, whenever, whenever I was in, I'm still in the top, I'm still a top guy. So why would I leave something where I'm making a ton of money, I'm not working crazy dates, come WWE status, mm-hmm. obviously, and I can see my family. I got five kids at home. And they love me overseas. 
I talk oh, about this all the Saudi, time. Yo, that Saudi greatest, fakest Royal Rumble shit, and he that came Poppy out. That Poppy got? Oh shit! It was like take a. He's level. loved now. The Usos. This is a little iffy. There was a couple of that was some comments under the um, under the video that that we reported when we reported about it. it said the Usos, they're in the business. WWE is in their blood, basically, which is true. The only way I see the Usos leaving if they're completely fed up. Which I don't think they are. I don't think they are. And I think when you... The thing about when, you know, you start a brand new company, ground up, every end of... Did you need to pause it? No, I was looking at the time. Oh, okay, cool. Because his, his wife is still with the company. Naomi's still there. Uh-huh. I mean... Jimmy or Jay? Which one is... I don't right? fucking know. I... Can't tell the fuck. I see difference. it this way. Right on ever leaving? No. What's the point? <laughs> it's like that is a career. It's just like they they did right by him. You know? They did. They did right by him. He had a lot of short opportunities. They made him fucking out. WWE yeah. champion, rest me. Yeah, it's just like Bullshit. you chill out and like you chill. So the whole Uso thing is kinda like this way. If I see them leaving, I don't understand why. Cause they probably looking like we had everything for this tag team division. There's nothing more we could do because you're not really built up the division. You're kind of like, what's more you could do in this? So they probably might go over to AEW and be on some like, yeah, top of new fuse. I'm hungry. I mean, I'm not, not going to lie though. I would pay to see SCU versus Usos. I, I'm not going to lie. Daniels, um, Kazarian, and um, oh, yeah, Scorpio right. Sky. Or, you know, it could be like. I wouldn't be mad about that. You know, a triple threat match. LAX, the Lucha Rovers, to the Usos. Come on. Who's your brother? This sound. This sound. LA's not signed yet. They might be the pop up shows. And then they might be in. Who's my AEW? They might pop up at a House of Rose show to go against LAX. No, I. It, it, so all the possibility for LAX finds a tag team? Yo, LAX, sorry. For the Usos, is an up and up. So them leaving, it will make sense. Them staying will make sense. Because the company has been behind them for a while. They're on TV every week. Every week. They do have to. Yeah, have, I would pay to see, right. see Disputed Air Air, Disputed Air versus Usos too. Yeah. Shit. So now, yeah, would, at this point, I wouldn't be mad if Usos leaves. Would I be mad if AJ leaves at this point? AJ no. not going nowhere. Like, like again, would I be mad for him leaving? No. He probably looking like, yo, I became WWE champion. This, that, and third. I have to do this one. It's good, but they do treat them well. It's it's WWE is a place you go to, and it's like you can live you can live with it. Yeah, and I feel and, like and, and I understand I understand for certain people who are fed up. For instance, the revival. Yeah, they're fed up. Yeah, or um, Michael Nolis. Yeah, fed up. Fed up. Like certain people are fed up, and I understand yeah. that. But these two people that we're talking about. No, I'm not leaving. You know what? I got a statement. Because I was reading something. You put up this earlier. You was like, how that... For AEW to see, they, they cannot be WWE like. Okay. Honestly, I'm watching TNA a couple of times. You kind of see that... When they try to push these WWE guys formally, you kind of see why Vince didn't push them. Boom. Example. Um, 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 Tyson Tomko. When you're TNA looking like... Ah, I see why Vince didn't push them. Boom. You see a dude like... um. You see the dude like Muhammad Sai, you're like, ugh, I see why they really didn't push him. Landon Jordan, I see why they really didn't push him. It was just like, get certain guys you know that they can get behind and they want it as badly. Sometimes it's not this is false, sometimes they can't be pushed. It's just like, they're not putting the work in on their end, really reaching the brass knuckles. And a lot of times people go to other companies that they deserve there, they get exposed. So you kind of see why Vince was right on them. Okay. All right, well, we're going to move on to our WWE recap. Um, and before we do, I don't know if everyone was in the known, um, but as always, the week after WrestleMania, Raw and SmackDown will be doing their Superstar Shake-Up um, actually across the border of Canada. They're going to be in Montreal, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, Monday and Tuesday, April 15th and 16th at the Bell Century Center in Montreal, Canada. And once should we do something for this? The week after, I think we should. Yeah. The week after WrestleMania, um, and it's important. And the question is going to be to you guys: Is where do you where do you see who's 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 going to be shooken up? 
Because if you do not know, this shakeup will actually determine who will be a part of the SmackDown brand when it goes live on Fox. So this draft, this shakeup is actually super duper important, not only, you know, for storyline purposes and kind of giving each brand kind of that breath of fresh air that they kind of need after WrestleMania, um, but it also determines, you know, that brand that's going to be pushing ratings for SmackDown on Fox. So my question to you guys, and we can just have a you know convo about it before we talk about our ups and downs of this week on Raw and SmackDown. Um, who's going where? I said that for our first guy, if the Miz shows is, 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 is still successful, the Miz is going back to Raw. So he can go promote his show that he has. So it won't be conflict of interest. So I see the Miz going back if his show is continuing to be successful back to Raw. Um... I see um, Becky staying on SmackDown uh-uh. because I feel uh-huh. like you want two of your biggest stars on two different brands. Or if they do that, they flip-flop each other. And you might see one version of Four Horsemen, Becky's Four Horsemen go on Raw, and Ronda's Four Horsemen go on SmackDown. Or they might take elements of both Four Horsemen and mix them around so that Shasha will go on SmackDown with Bailey. And they might bring someone else over. They might bring Becky with um, Charlotte over to Raw. See, now the wild card is in the event that, um, and that's, I think it's an interesting wild card, but that women's tag team title yeah. is a cross brand title. Cross-branded. So actually, whoever wins doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah, have to be on a particular brand. So I think that always is the nice wild card. Um, and of I think it. that as far as like another person, I won't be surprised on SmackDown. Is I think the new they stay on SmackDown, but I think AJ is going wrong because like and Valentine's going to go to SmackDown to give that entertainment purpose like that wow and that big thing and Adam Cole going to SmackDown because you want some indie stars and you want some up and coming talent you want the up and hungry going against the the new and of course I think Ray stay on SmackDown you know the basic staples of the brand but like. Five new faces and Jack new feuds. Yeah, Mustafa Ali is definitely staying on SmackDown because they want the new, the young blood. And my wild card, I go wow, like that threw me off. Um, if Brock on SmackDown, that'll be a wild card. What do you think? I'm not saying anything until after WrestleMania. Mm. Oh, but then you want AEW talking. You want to talk about that, but you want to talk about Superstar Shake Up. AEW needs to be talk, spoken about on this podcast. It, it's not every fucking they week, though, bro. Too. Goddamn. Um, I said they're going to end up swapping titles, I think, on brands. So I've always said I think Seth needs to be on SmackDown. I don't think he has anything left to prove on Raw. I, um, I think you're going to get... Um, to be honest, you might get Kevin Owens and Sammy back on SmackDown. Um, I do see who else switching. Who's on SmackDown? They think Joel would stay there. Um, if they did Cole, Adam Cole popped up. He's gonna go on Raw because I and I think if I think if they bring up Adam Cole, they gotta bring up everybody. That's just my wish is that I feel like I feel like that's always and I'm just me personally as a wrestling fan huge on stables like greatest stable of all time is going to be Four Horsemen no matter what you can debate me on it if you want but that's I feel like the one thing WWE misses is a good stable it's a good stable that will like like a, like a DX like like yeah. a nation like like a heart foundation like even JBL's little stable or something like you you're they're missing a good stable, so I think having undisputed era on Raw benefits everyone. Um, I see Sasha going on SmackDown. I do see Bailey going on SmackDown. I see Becky if they keep it Becky and Ronda. I see if Becky wins, her staying on Raw. Um, they'll keep Charlotte on SmackDown. Um. I think that's it. I can't think of anybody else. Like that makes sense. So, but all right, let's talk about Raw. Two ups, two downs. What was this week for you guys like? I say one of my ups was the Boston Hug connection. How that match started 
Like it was, it felt like, like a real brawl. Like it was just on a stage, brawling each other. And how I went to the ring, and how I got that W, you felt the emotions like, it was, to me, it was the turning moment when LeBron went back to Cleveland for the first time. Nigga, what? Nigga, what? Like, I felt that, that's when, like, that was the moment where, like, I believed in the heat after that. That was when I was like, you know what? I'm going to rock with them. Yo, you got to explain this analogy. Wait. Okay. So what? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. When you felt yes. that LeBron was definitely, definitely, like, coming to LeBron who was coming into, like, you felt the metamorphosis when you went back to Cleveland as a heat, and he won that game. And you just felt after that, his seconds went up. Oh, up. he's saying like when... Okay, I get it now. I get to what's them, listening now. Listening. It was just like, you felt genuine emotions. Like, they was dead on the stage, brawling each other because Nikki Cross and Alicia Fox, that's a good rub for them. Make them look like they're crazy one doing anything. But they are crazy. To get that W. Brawling on the stage. Brawling, 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 brawling. What's the... Sorry, what's the name of the character on Dave Chappelle that... Ashley Larry? Yeah, lick your lips, B. Yeah, so anybody that's listening. He's like this. Anybody that's listening to the podcast. He's so into Leo's what lips are mad, saying, are mad and ashy I right now. I was just so into his ashy ass lips because I just couldn't anymore. I, I mean, like, yeah, just what like, in the fuck? This is weird. It's like with that situation, like the fact the whole match was good. That was my up. Like, and a lot of people don't agree with it. Is like that. My love for me is Leo. Leo Rush new um new outfit. Dog, He's dog, had that outfit though. He wore that before. So I take that back. So, um, so I'm up I you. thought you was gonna say the match because I thought the match was one of the top matches on it Raw really because it made sense. It was a conversation I had with um, my coworker at work today because he was like, he doesn't like the fact that they're talking about Finn going to 205 up, and I'm like, but Finn is 205. Like he's under 205. And like, once again, cross promotion for 205 live. You want to see more Leo Rush going 205? You gotta have a top. That's the one thing. That 205 is missing. They're missing an Enzo. Period. Exactly. Well, he was supposed to be on 205. Finn. Yeah. Originally. Mm-hmm. And but then, then that's that's the missing key. Then they put Rich, they Rich Swan instead. A, they don't have a Enzo. They don't have a Rich Swan on 205 left. So that's the issue. I mean, overall, Raw wasn't bad at all. I, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it overall. I like the whole Jeff Jarrett versus Elias match. Like, overall, Raw was fun. I didn't watch it live because I was tired, but what I saw after, I was like, this is very fun. Like, again, the pacing is better now. So, again, my down is, and, um, no, I, no, you know, oh, my down is, like, Barry Corbin's outfit, B. Like, my nigga, my nigga. Not the GM no more, you can change your clothes, B. But change it to what? Like, I think that's where they, they, Boy, they don't like his body. They, Cause it's long and his his torso's too fucking okay. long. Okay, they were like weird. You don't know, like a shirt. And he like, can't like NXT. he can't like, wear and he looks weird in NXT because he didn't have a shirt and he just had on pants. Yeah, the shirt the shirt Baron Corbin was tough. I like shirt Baron Corbin. I took him seriously, but Baron Corbin looking like an H and M manager in wrestling. How look like when you when an entire champion looking like one of those regular people you see in the office? I can't take you seriously. I, I mean, it's the same like we used to look at Doink the Clown or um, Did that Honky Tonk Man or Honky Tonk Man was tough with the title. B. like we saw his like his like his chest or, was all out. He um, looked tough. B. He looked tough. A bunch of other random gimmicks that's been like through even the years. with John Cena with like the um with like the with like the um with the jean short. Oh he no, bullshit! Tough. No, 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 no. It looked tough, but like I didn't take Cena serious with that fucking jer- the Jersey shit at first. I was like, I did. Like, I was like, what is this? He was word life, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, but He's I was just like, he what the fuck is this? I'm forcing you to feel me. My fighting is for real. I got you in the back of the position. Are you scrapping? Are you telling yourself? It's word life. So, I think he's untouchable. Oh, my gosh. I see the back in the day was tough, B. Dang. Dang. What did you get in the house? I have his album. What, John Cena? Yeah. Oh, that shit like hit like. That shit went gold. Like, yeah, like it, it went. Popping. Yeah, it charted. Yeah. Lick your lips. He I needs way more than. I don't know how to put it. Um, so I enjoyed Raw. Those your downs. Pacing was pacing was solid. Um, my down was Alive versus Jeff Jarrett. Because the guitar didn't break. The, the guitar didn't break. The match was fucking stupid. 
looks fucking stupid. No, it's great. That's because you like Jeff No, Jarrett. what I don't like, okay, that's you oh, a hater. True. But what I don't like is they, they mixed both Jarrett's. So they mixed the, the, the Jeff Jarrett that had the roadie I didn't like that. with the music. But then they the outfit was Jarrett when he was with Deborah with the, the yellow shades. Like I was just like, pick up. Pick a fucking yeah. era of Jared. Like I don't care. Stop doing that. It was that. stupid. It's not stupid. Yes, it was. It was, it was fucking not. stupid. It wasn't stupid. It made sense. It was absolutely fucking stupid. Um, the women this week on both shows took it. Really fucking took it. Becky Lynch versus Steph- Stephanie McMahon is literally Austin and Vince. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Now. Which is probably why I'm not impressed. Now. The only thing I'll give Stephanie, and I'll talk about this with Triple H as well, is that it wasn't authority as a character. It's just, hey, you need, you need to go home and get this shit done. Yeah. And I enjoyed that. I agree. Obviously, they're going to build it up more, Bobby, but, but that one, I was like, okay, you know what? You're just doing your job, and then Becky's acting wild and punching you in the face because she, she doesn't want to go home. Cool. I'll take it. Rhonda? I don't know what they're doing with her. Not, uh, there's, not, there's nothing to do. That, that's the thing. So, so they're playing on this whole, is she heel? Is she face? And letting the crowd decide. Because the crowd don't like her. They were loving Becky. Becky got some crazy pop. But see, that's always been the issue is that they can't, they want Becky to be the heel, but no, she's getting Be- a pop. Becky's the like face. face. Becky's the face. And, but it, I think if for them to flip Ronda would be the smart move. They are flipping Ronda. Slowly. They are. Slowly flipping Ronda. So now I go into the match that she had with Liv Morgan and, and, and Sarah Logan. One, Liv Morgan looks like the kind of girl that will ruin your whole fucking life. My God, she looks like a chick that will ruin your fucking life. Sarah look like, look like Wait, that who? kind of encourage your bad behavior. Liv Morgan? She will uh, ruin a dude's life. But anyways... Back to the match. What Rhonda did when she kind of spazzed out because she's like tired, tired of the people and tired of this and all this other thing she's saying. Blah, blah, blah. It was good. God. The emotion was there. Her acting was getting better. Solid. It was. Solid. Becky with Steph, I loving it. Love what they did. It is a copy, but once again, it, you saw something. They're building on something. They're working something. Truly working something. You know what? Dean Ambrose in that EC3 segment. Yo, when he said, yo, where's EC1 and 2? Yo, <laughs> yo, I guy was so, dying. My biggest thing shit. with that, if he is leaving, he has the attitude of a nigga that's leaving his job. You, you know that two weeks you give your, your job a two weeks notice? Oh, uh, yeah. I never quit a job before. Oh, I Okay, yeah. Okay. So, you know when you give a job a two yeah, weeks notice? I was like, yeah, you know when you start not giving a fuck? Like, like, that's how he came out. He was like... Psh, psh, psh. Well, I'm about to be out. No, but what I liked about the segment was that he acknowledged the whole Naya thing. Yeah. Which was funny because then you hear Renee Young on commentary like, what the fuck? Like, whoa! <laughs> and then Too much. Too, and and then, then, but when he said, yo, where's EC1 and 2? And then nigga, the internet is fucking ruthless. So niggas was posting pictures of EC when he was like first, like, like first NXT? in TNA. Yeah, NXT. And then the TNA one, yeah. I was like, oh no. So it... it I, I enjoyed that segment. But I thank you, EC, for winning because you gave me TV points. So Thanks. him winning, him winning, it looked cool. Dean doesn't give a fuck. That's exactly how he came off. But is it, I don't think it's a bad thing. And, and, and no, I wasn't, that's why I said it wasn't a bad segment of that. Mm-hmm. Those were my highlights for the match. That one was my highlights for the, for the night. And my other down was the ending to the. The Drew McIntyre. And, oh, it was so fucking weird. It was just a weird ending for, for, for what it was. By the way, Corey Graves, <laughs> you're saying the most reckless shit. Wild shit. Like, you have to really hear him out. Like, I think I listen to him way too much. And I think he's, he's doing his job at this point because I'm listening to what he says way too much. But I'll talk about what he said on SmackDown. Yo, I don't, and I always try to figure out. Like yo, I always try to figure out which show he's more wild on. He's definitely more wild on SmackDown. So we'll go on to SmackDown. I'll get my two ups and my two downs for SmackDown. So Manny Rose comes out. Wait, pause. Hold on. He looked like he had his brother's jersey on, like his younger brother's jersey on. Like he was super. Yeah. So 
Mandy comes out um, with um, so Sonia. Sonia. And Corey Rave is like, you know why God rested on the seventh day? Because on the sixth day, he was making Mandy. What? And I was like, did anybody catch this? <laughs> Yo, no one can change the commentary, but they funny. No, it's, it's most. It's mostly Corey. Because he be saying some wild shit. Then, and then I think whenever he says wild shit, it throws Saxon off because you don't hear him for the next like five solid minutes. So and because he said right? that, and I was like, "Yo, does anybody hear his reckless shit that's coming out of his mouth right now?" And then the week before, he was like, "Because it was Baron Corbin, the Baron Corbin situation, and him and Renee are legit." Once again, I know it's 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 kayfabe, yeah. but they're legit arguing over the mic. And he's just like, yo, Baron Corbin's amazing. This and that. He's going, he's hyping up Baron Corbin like he's supposed to. Because he's like the heel commentator. Mm-hmm. And Renee is like, no, Baron Corbin, blah, 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 bringing him down. And then Renee is like, so you weren't at his wedding? So you weren't at his wedding. And he's like, that doesn't matter. He's still, he's still the greatest, but you weren't at his wedding. Were you at his wedding? And I'm dying when I'm because I'm watching. I was like, yo, does anybody count? And this, at this point, I'm just like, yo. I like this. Me too. He's like the modern day king at this point. No, that ass. But like, but like, I kind of miss Booker T and him used to go without it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. No, because I didn't know what was real or what was fake. So like, I actually, I, I'm okay with that. Clip, that, that I'm not like, being there. Corey did. I mean, Booker T said. Uh, Corey did say something about Booker T. Booker T face was just like. Yo, because Booker T, and that's the thing. Thank God, commentary doesn't always have like the hard camera isn't on you. Because Booker T's face all the time, I felt like when it was on it, it was like this nigga here. Like this, I just want to fuck this nigga up so bad. Like Booker T's mad hood. He's a mad hood. So he's I, not- I thank God that T, that the camera is not always on this nigga when he was doing commentary because I really feel like his face, it was always on uh, some like, I will fuck this nigga up is what he don't know. Now, my ups and downs, we gotta, we gotta wrap up soon. So, once again, I enjoyed the beginning of SmackDown. Triple H did his job. Mm-hmm. Was the boss, then somebody said something reckless to him, he put them in this place. And I love Charlotte playing that bratty person, like, yo, let me get my shot. Ah, ha, 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 the, the, the teacher's here. Mm-hmm. I like that. Too. Totally enjoyed it. That Randy Orton RKO, I fucks Ooh, with it. Oh, shit. That, now, that definitely hits now the list up there where the whole was Seth and, and the Evan Bourne. Like, that yeah. shit was wild. Was Just the impact alone, you were like, what the fuck? Um, I didn't really like the Jeff Hardy and the new Daniel Bryan match. I wasn't 100% sold on it. It was good, but I wasn't 100% sold on it. Mm-hmm. My other down... It wasn't it really a doubt. It was like, hmm, okay. Yeah. This is obviously a build-up. Rusev and Shinsuke Sh- 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 Nakamura. I said that last week. I said they are pairing him as a tag team. So I'm okay. Genius. I'm okay with it. But let's see where this goes. Let's see if they what what a lot of times that they do. They go, they move something and then they leave it. They they, they dead it. This kind of reminds me of um, Enzo Kazui and um, Kazui. Wow, Enzo K- um, Kazui and um, that French guy with a pair of them together. Who? I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But, yeah. yeah. But it's the same thing where they did with um, the bar. Exact same thing. Yeah, because so, so I think the bar is about to break up soon. But, but I was okay with it. SmackDown was good, but it wasn't better than Raw. I preferred Raw more. Yeah. And, what about oh, you? Before, I, before I go, the Usos promo, little, little thing that they did, yeah. fucking loved it. But you can go ahead. Once again, I'm biased against SmackDown. It was a very good show. I, I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. I enjoy everything they're doing. It's just like, yo, it's fun to be a wrestling fan. Especially for SmackDown. Like, you see Daniel Bryan cut a promo. He was like, and at the end, when all that chaos happened, he cut another promo. He was like, how that I am the world's champion. Like, in other words, I'm like the, like, I'm the savior of this planet. Like, on some Captain America type of vibe. He's like, you felt him. And like, he basically saying that, yo, don't attack my friend Luke. Yo, he just like you. Like, he cut a hill, baby face photo in his, in his hometown that worked. Yo, when he said he was propping up the state of Washington, then he was just like, but but what I do is on a global level. I was exactly. like, 
And that this is not this I is mean, really the new Daniel the, Bryan because Daniel Bryan circa two thousand and like twelve would have never said global level global would never and dissed his hometown. Like, what they did like little stuff. You saw his fan. The guy got his homemade title showing off on television. Like you could tell that he's doing it right by D Boy B. It's just you just call him D Boy. He definitely yeah. just called him D Boy. You know? I was saying, like, who's D Boy? This nigga is not D Boy. This nigga's out there drinking carafe beers. Yeah, that's my guy, though. But I liked it. Like, it was good. Um, that's another up for me. Another up and up was, of course, my son, um, my son Mumu, you know? Who again. is that? Mufasa Ali. Mufasa Ali. Oh my you know, God. I like the second with my son Joe. You Joel. can't nickname him. I nickname everybody. Just like Sex. We didn't nickname you, guy. I nickname him. I was special. Ooh, heard you. Why bro. did you wink at him? <laughs> you, why are you so gay? Heard you. Yo, you think about a couple of people. If you were gay, you'd probably be a, a mean bottom. So. Wait, I'm going to say. If you were gay. He did like this. He did like this. If you were gay. If you were gay. like this, you would just like kind of. Would you be top or bottom? Huh? What? If you were gay, would you be top or bottom? He's definitely a bottom. He's a top. No, you definitely a bottom. Top. <laughs> you went too hard. Oh, top. I'm oh, trying to flex. <laughs> I'm stop. Oh, oh, oh. I'm taking no dick. It's so oh, you okay. You know what? You know what? You know what? Like I said before, <laughs> I enjoyed this. <laughs> you know, um, oh shit! Like um, I enjoyed it. Oh shit! Like that. Yeah, you enjoyed it. So. Yeah, you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, like, next that, one. That, that, that's just an awkward segue into both of you niggas. Like. I enjoyed this, and I kept saying. I All right, so we're this. doing the social corner. So we are going to um, do a new segment. Um, we power bottom. Power bottom. Nah, he's he's definitely not a power what? bottom. He's too small to be a power bottom. Wait, what is a power bottom? We're talking First about that Keyword power. Ain't that power about you? Yeah, power in your ass. You have power in your ass. No, I Look at him, love. Now he's scared. Now you got the boy scared. Anyway, um, over the past year, we've been super interactive with those um, that are been following our Instagram page and, and watching on the live feed. So uh, we wanted to start a new segment called Jobbers um, Social Corner, um, where the boys will post a question every Wednesday morning, um, as they did this morning. Um, and then we will read some of the comments that were put. Um, we'll shout those individuals that posted and answered the question. Because we, as we always say, you know, we can't do half the things we do without you guys being viewers and watchers and supporters. So we always want to give you guys some time to shine and um, make something a part of the episode about you. Uh, seeing as if sometimes people always complain we don't interact during the live feed and it's, just, it's super hard to sometimes. Mm. Uh, but we figured this might be the best way to get those that do watch the show and our fans and supporters of the Jabba Tears podcast a way to be incorporated <laughs> into the what? show. You talked about, who said that? Bubble Clock on said that is when you throw back the power cup, like you throw it in the back. So you be throwing your ass back you to throw your the ass, You throw your ass group? in a circle? What? You throw your ass back to dudes? You throw your ass you in gay. a circle? You no, big gay. No, you no, big no. gay. You throw your ass in a circle? That's what I don't know. Listen, Wait, how do you do that? Throw the ass in a Why circle? Why do you want to know how to do that? Why do you want to know how to do that? Are you throwing not... your ass in a circle? That's all I want to know. All right, you know what? We'll stop. We'll stop, Leo. <laughs> Relax. So, we have... I picked out a couple of fives, five people who um, answered the question, which was, why is ben Becky Lynch so over? Mm. Chris Bird said... She had a storyline that anyone can relate to, plus she's damn good in the ring. Um, another person, highly un underscore under underscore 910 said, she turned at the right time, plus the fans wanted her to get this push. Mm -hmm. BizJ791 said, honestly, it's a combo of Stone Cold and Conor McGregor, sprinkle a little bit of eye candy. Who said that? Sus. BizJ791. <laughs> The pride of NYC said because the man was birthed <laughs> from the womb of the queen. I don't know what that means. That means it, it's from Romeo. It, it, the queen he referring to is Charlotte. I, I know. I was just trying to be played dumb. <laughs> Anthony Abay, my our boy Anthony. What's what up, up Ant? Ant? What up? Because she is talented, hard worker, and she has she was the underdog for most of her career. Mm -hmm. But was she though? And um, <laughs> Mr. Nasty. Official Mr. Nasty, Nasty Leroy. Oh, this guy. 
Wow. Your yo, long lost cousin. What is a what is this, a nasty nation? Yeah, <laughs> yo, I swear that shit had me rolling. Welcome to nasty nation. <laughs> she know that she is the best, and she don't give a fuck. This is the exact word. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> so and aggressive. She, and she believes she's the man because she is the man. So, so aggressive. That's a couple of five people. Every Wednesday we'll, we'll be putting down questions. You answer them, and we might be. Maybe a, a lucky winner to be a part of our episode. Um, but that whole underdog thing, that's debatable. So, okay, before we go, I've said this before, Charlotte made her pop in. Point blank, period. Point blank. And I'm, and I'm going to leave it as that, as you sign us off, queen. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, so we do have, those that are watching on the live feed, this information is really for you. Um, it's an indie show alert this weekend. There are three indie shows going on in the Tri-State area this Saturday. So you have House of Glories, Recapture the Glory, uh, where you're featuring um, Impact Tag Team Champions, LAX versus Lucha Bros, Phoenix, and Pentagon Jr. So if you watch TNA's Homecoming and saw that match, and that match was pretty much the match of the night... You can see it live at um, HOG. And then also you have Sonya Strong, who is the current reigning and defending House of Glory Women's Champion, facing Jordan Grace, who is your current reigning and defending Progress Champion. And it's title for title. So someone's walking out of Queens, double champion. Um, and then you also have my boys, New York Wrecking Crew, um, and a mystery partner of their choice facing um, the Masons and Evander Jean. So once again... Um, those that are watching on live feed, House of Glory this Saturday. Also, um, you have um, NEW Pro Wrestling in Queens as well at the Elks Live. Shout out to Super Nitro, who's been coming to our viewing party. He's been supporting Jabba Tears, so we want to support our boy. Um, he's having um, a match this Saturday in Queens as well. And then my good old friend, Mr. Vince Steele, um, is going to be in a tournament in Jersey. Um, for Ace Pro Wrestling, um, the Hero Celebration um, Heroes Cup tournament that he's going to be participating in. Um, so shout out to you, Vince and Super Nitro and all of my good friends at the House of Glory. Um, so there is a lot of wrestling all in one week, all in one day. So pick your poison. Um, before we sign off, we do want to always remind everyone that you can um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at the Jabba Tears Podcast. Um, special alert with us going into WrestleMania season and there are going to be a lot of events, a lot of things where people are going to want to know what, you know, what's going on in the city. Um, I'm personally going to be posting events on our Facebook group page, um, that you can be able to be kept up to date. Cause I, whether it's parties, podcasts, um, other, um, wrestling conventions, indie shows, it's a lot that's going to be happening all in the first week of April, and I think you guys should be informed. So I will do my due diligence and make sure everyone is informed because that is what HR does. Um, don't forget that next Sunday is Elimination Chamber where WWE will crown the first ever women tag team champions um, inside the Elimination Chamber. Um, so we will be doing our viewing party at Legend. So you can RSVP at the Job Tears Podcast at gmail.com or Instagram DM us for more information. Um, anything I'm missing as they are trying to communicate with off camera, but on camera as well. Um, as always, I am Janelle from HR with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black as they have gone fade to black. But, um, as always, hashtag black excellence, hashtag we're out. It's the Jabba's Tears podcast. <laughs>